All right, guys, go to Boy32 here, check it out. So we're sitting here in the Freedom Shack, uh, getting ready to start on the project we talked about in the video last night, where we're going to incorporate this uh, Pelican 1600 case with uh, the foam in it. And one of the things I wanted to do was I wanted to incorporate uh, the Law Tactical Folder on a new lower. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to purpose this lower to be able to accept the SBA 3 brace as well as a regular uh, stock. This guy right here, the Veltor. All right, anyway, so what do we do? Um, the original intent was I was going to go ahead and put uh, that lower system with the folder on this upper. Unfortunately, the, my welder system is not working with me. Uh, the, my generator won't power the damn thing, so we're going to put a 50 amp breaker in this week and go ahead and then we'll get it up and running, which I'm really excited about. And we'll be able to pin and weld it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to repurpose. Check it out. This upper right here, this is the one that's got that uh, Viper, what do you call this thing? The Strike Industries Viper PDW. Uh, this thing is awesome, but I don't really want to use this particular uh, brace system. Not that I don't like it, but I do like it. But what I want to do is I want to use the SBA3 brace on this guy uh, because I'm going to do the folder on it and you can't use the folder on this one but what i am going to do is i'm going to take this upper that we have here which has the uh, a 12 and a half inch uh, barrel and one of the reasons i like the 12 and a half inch over the 10 and a half inch is you're going to retain more of your uh, ballistics the vital ballistics that you need uh and muzzle velocity and basically the same thing and use this thing. Now what I'm planning on doing, and I hate to do it, but I am going to do it, is this is a uh, UTG Pro quad rail. And because I like the quad rail application on a go rifle, uh, I'm going to take this guy and take the handguard off of it and put it on this 12 and a half inch, which is going to be really cool because uh, basically, it's going to cover the entire length of the barrel, and then all I'll have is a muzzle break out there. So I'll have a full run of this guy right here. Now, this is a ballistic advantage. This is their government profile, uh, 12 and a half inch, and uh, this barrel, this is the FN. Now, this is a really nice rifle, and you know what I may do is go ahead and put a different handguard on this in the future if this guy works out. Now, we'll take it to the range. We'll see how it performs and how it runs. It'll be a lot of fun. Stand by. We'll go ahead and make the switch, and I'm going to bring you back and show you how it looks, and then we'll take it out to the field this upcoming week. All right, guys, sorry about that. The uh, battery ran out on my camera, but here it is. This is the upper as it sits. Now, the only thing I got left to do is uh, mount the flashlight on it. But again, this is the UTG. This is your 12-inch, uh, what do you call this, quad rail. I like the quad rail because it gives me a lot of real estate just to move things around. I don't have to worry about M locks or anything else. This is the, and with the 12 and a half inch barrel, the Yankee Hill, uh, muzzle brake really, really does work out well. Look at that thing, man. That's a bad mamma jamma right there. But in any case, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to build the law folder lower system out of a mil spec lower. And uh, that way I can actually change it out between a stock, a uh, regular uh, classable stock, and the SBA3 brace, depending on what upper I'm running. Now, the whole thing for this is to hopefully get it to fit in that Pelican 1600 case. I think right now it's going to be a little on the long side uh, to fit in there. So we might look at some other options, but the idea is I want this to be able to be secured. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and put that lower together and then I'll show you the complete rifle when it's all said and done. Here we go. Stand by. All right, we're sitting here and we've got this upper built, but the only problem is we're running a little long. Right now, the overall length of this guy is it's it would barely fit uh, without the uh, the law adapter on it. So what I did was I brought out this guy right here. This is a ten and a half inch barrel with the same exact hand guard, uh, except it's nine inches long. Ten and a half inch barrel, nine inch uh, hand guard. It's also running the uh, what do we got on this thing? This is the uh, Viking Tactics 
uh, light mount with the uh, primary arms. This is her Gen 2. This is her smaller one. But this is the Sig Sauer Romeo 5X, the R, and the Juliet 4 times magnifier with a flip side mount on it. I love this thing as my dogs go crazy. So anyway, I'm going to bring this thing out. May have to reevaluate the whole situation go with a 10 and a half inch barrel. We'll see. But this is the fun, guys. This is the fun part about what we do. Then we put these things into business and see how they run. Here we go. Just a little interesting thing. Also decided to go ahead and utilize the, uh, the same lower uh, that the uh, Cujo was having. So we'll go ahead and put that law adapter on this guy. So anyway, uh, it's got a great trigger system in it. And I just thought, you know what? I don't want to mess with it. Plus, the other lowers that I had, they're already accounted for on some upcoming bills that you guys get to see. Here we go. All right, so here's what happened. Uh, the whole basis of this scenario is to put a, a, a platform inside of this lockable container. And what I found out, and I should have really done this beforehand, you guys probably are reminding me to do this, but this guy was not going to fit in there. It's, it's almost exactly the same length as the inside. Uh, <laughs> So what happened is I pulled, remember, the, uh, the old uh, ten and a half out, and this is what we got. It's this guy right here. Now, is this uh, something that I'm upset about? No, not at all, man. Uh, this, this particular barrel is anchored out to 300 yards. It's five-inch groups, man. It's an absolutely awesome barrel. Uh, one thing that I would say, and we're going to just uh, start off by this, is that... The law adapter, this thing was so easy to install, it was absolutely crazy. Um, the only thing that I would say is that you may want to consider, if you're going to put this on, is an extended charging handle right here, simply because you've got this area right here. And when I am either going to charge, clear, do whatever I'm going to do with this firearm, that could come into play, that little knuckle area right there. Um, but overall, really nice platform, and I'm looking forward to it. So what we'll do uh, moving forward, the uh, shit hits the fan scenario, I'm going to go ahead and cut the foam out so that this guy works and it fits in there. Uh, I may go ahead and, because you can shoot it like this, looks like something out of Star Wars, I might go ahead and... Uh, this thing's already zeroed, and I think I actually zeroed this at, uh, I think, 36 yards. I'm not sure. I might go ahead and leave the magnifier and the optic on there. I really do dig these. Uh, I don't have any issues with it, but I might go ahead and take and relocate the light. This setup that's sitting on top of this handguard because the two handguards are absolutely identical, uh, except one's 12 inches, one's 9 inches. And uh, this UTG, you've got three uh, locations for some QD mounts. I went ahead and put the QD uh, base plate back on here. And you got a QT attachment here. But I like running QD. I uh, like running everything right on my base plate because I like a little higher uh, mount on my uh, weapons. So, anyway. <laughs> ah, a lot of fun. So, uh, until next time, we'll go ahead and do the cutout. And uh, show you what that looks like, and we'll go ahead and put a uh, firearm pistol in there, backup flashlight, and a couple knives, which we like to do. But in any case, guys, that's it, part one of this series. Uh, we still have to do the uh, overall review of the Everyday Joe, which I want to bring out probably tomorrow. So in the next two days, you're going to see this guy as well as the Everyday Joe, and I want to take those two rifles out of town with me and... Uh, Put some good use to them. I got a surprise for you guys. This is one of the reasons why I bought the, uh, what do you call it, that welder, so we can pin and weld a cool project, uh, thanks to the guys over there at PSA. Also, just an FYI, uh, you're looking at some SOP mod stuff. This is all from uh, the guys over there at Optics Planet. You can get these hand guards from Optics Planet as well. And the reason I like these things is, one, they're functional, functional, I guess that's a word, they're aggressive, and I like the aggressiveness, uh, and they are economical. I think the 12-inch was like $90, which is absolutely awesome. 
So anyway, guys, I hope you like this. Until next time, uh, Scooter Boy 32. We always end it like this. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Consider it a Patreon thing. Uh, and uh, God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom's not free. I'm talking about those cats that fight for our constitutional rights. Because it's written by our founding fathers. Look at that. That's 20 milliwatts, milliamp, mill, mill, whatever it is, of uh, green laser. Also, IR laser in that thing. So <laughs> you can bring a set of nods with you if you want. It's good boy 32. I'm out of here. Y'all be good. This thing's awesome. I should have done this a long time ago. Wow. Look at that.